So I pulled the blades out the machine and this is what we're wor working with here. As you see, the damage was not very extensive. There's a few warped chunks right there and then two right here. So it looks like I need to end up cutting out and replacing about two or three blades. I left them out overnight so a little bit of rust got on them because it rained a little bit, the moisture, blah blah blah. But normally they're completely covered in an oil and carbon layer so rust is never an issue. And of course they never are outside the reactor where there's available oxygen radicals and such. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started on this repair here. A very rare look inside this reactor empty. You see down there, at the very beginning, there's a clump of plastic, like the lake. The lake of molten solidified plastic I was talking about. That ended up damaging the blades. That's why we have to have all the magnetrons on. You see the importance of a full power run. Or else we deal with bollocks like this. Where I'm spending hours having to fix this stuff. It's alright though, it's almost done. You see I straightened out all the bent blades, now we need to cut out, or rather weld together these three blades here, or rather just two. Only two need to be completely cut out. Alright, so both of them have been cut out and ground down. Now it's very important that they're ground down because if there's any sharp edges on there, it's going to end up being an antenna for the microwaves to actually come out and form plasma. And the issue with that is that that's going to actually waste a lot of the microwave energy that would have otherwise gone to heating up the plastics. So, these are ground down nice and good. By the way, a lot of people suggested that I put some rods throughout the whole bar part of the blades, kind of like how I put rods down here in the beginning. I'm going to explain to you why I'm not doing that. One of the main and biggest advantages to this being a shaftless auger system is that it allows microwaves to pass in between the gaps between the blades and not be reflected on by a big shaft. But even small shafts between all of them would be problematic, primarily because of me doing this by hand. The inconsistencies and imperfections will be completely um, shown in the fact that some of these blades will be floating. Because since now, the way how it's operating now, being shaftless like this, with no shaft in the middle or supports, the gravity just kind of pulls all the blades down. So even all the little imperfections and the circumferences doesn't really make a difference. As you obviously have seen, the plastic gets pushed out the machine just fine. So that's why I'm not going to bother doing that. And then, like you said, like I said before last video, the only reason why this even happened is because I tried to turn the blades while they were basically fused to molten plastic. When it's just carbon in there, it works amazingly fine. When it's just plastic in there, even a huge quantity of plastic, the blades have no issue pushing it without getting warped.
All right, so the blades are done. Repair has been complete. Just two slots that need to be cut out and rewelded. Let's go ahead and load them in the machine. Got them in. Now I gotta install the gearbox and motor. So this here is the shaft seal. This is what's going to, with this spring, be pushed up against this to cause a ton of pressure that's gonna force this to cause a mechanical seal against this bit of metal here, allowing us to have pressure built in this machine and vacuum and not lose out on that stuff there, right? And then this here is the bearing. And this is gonna be, right now it's being suspended on these all threads and we're gonna go ahead and screw it down in there. See how much that spring compressed? That lets us know that there is maximum force being pressed against this seal here. Now we gotta put the gearbox on. The gear, this is a 100 to 1 gearbox, which means every time the top of the gearbox spins 100 times, the output shaft will spin once. So that gives us pretty high torque. All right, gearbox is on. Now let's put this bolts in and bolt it down. All right, now that the gearbox is on, the shaft seal is on, bearings on. Uh, now the shaft is pretty much set in there. We can set the motor on now. Oh! Did it 